Hello, I'm Faye and today we are only talking about books that made me feel something. I decided to geek out and we're combining the fact that I'm a psychologist, so we're using Paul Ekman's principle of seven universal emotions and combining them with book recommendations. Anger. I'm going to recommend Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus, which was wildly popular when it came out in 2022. I guess it still is. In this, we follow Elizabeth Zott, a genius chemist in the 1960s, as she empowers women basically simply by taking them seriously. She um, runs a really successful cooking show after basically sexism um, just edges her out of the research project she wants to be working on. I got really angry about the sexism on the page, which could have been the 1960s, but also does bleed into today for women working in STEM. But I thought this was like a productive kind of anger on the page. There were some great characters in this one. It's a bestseller for a reason and has recently been turned into a series as well. The other wildly different book recommendation I have for eliciting anger is The Thing Around Your Neck by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, which is a short story collection centered around people navigating growing up both between Nigeria and the US um, and having to navigate this space in between two countries by themselves. That's also what made me angry, the fact that these people are left to do that by themselves. The blurb promises to include short stories more on grief and sorrow, but a lot of the stories made me quite angry and I do love it when a book makes me feel something. For disgust as an emotion, I am also recommending a novel and a short story collection were the novel being a Lapvona by Tessa Mosh Feg. I did find a one star rating on Goodreads saying that this was gross for the sake of being gross. So I think this fits the prompt of disgust, eliciting disgust in the reader. In this medieval setting, we follow the unloved son of a shepherd, Marek, who in coincidentally ends up being wrapped up in the life of the rich. And even though I didn't love this book, I do think it will do something for you if you want to read something and just experience how far you can push yourself if you want to feel disgust on the page. Do check the trigger warnings for this one. Atesha Marshfeg, I do think, is a really talented, skilled writer and I did get through this one really quickly but was left with a lot of question marks upon finishing the book. And a little book on short stories that I want to recommend by Ian McEwan is called First Love, Last Rites and in his trademark beautiful language he published a book, this book, in 1975 and these stories basically tell stories wrapped around perversity. Um, some are more extreme than others, but they did push me to my limits to a certain extent. I love the lyrical language of Ian McEwan and I find that to be a really intriguing clash. Beautiful language plus horrific content. We're catching a little breather with the emotion of enjoyment and I want to recommend a YA fantasy duology, which is so not my usual jam. I did read these when they came out, I believe. Strange the Dreamer, the first was published 2017, and News of Nightmares, the subsequent year in 2018. Written by Eleni Taylor, this fantasy duology follows Laszlo, who is a long, young librarian who his whole life has dreamt of the unknown and unknowable city of weep and one day he gets to travel there. This duology has super angsty love, a super fast moving plot is like a really fun mashup of loads of fantasy elements, um, deities, creatures, magic, everything thrown into one. I had so much fun reading these books. I had loads of emotions feeling this book, but I'm picking it for representing enjoyment because even though I don't, I hardly ever 
read YA or fantasy these days. This one was so fun and it really got etched in my brain. But if that doesn't sound like a thing, I'm also going to recommend Queenie by Candice Carty Williams, which follows a 20 something year old in London as she goes through a breakup and tries to get back on the horse. Um, but this really isn't your typical unhinged woman book. I thought Queenie had such a unique voice the setting in London was also, I thought, really, really tangible. She um, grows up in a family both with Jamaican and British heritage. And um, the, the, the friendships portrayed in this one were really fun. There's also sort of like text messages and stuff like that thrown into the book, which I just thought it made it a more enjoyable, fast paced, fun, funny read. Fear is up next, and neither of the two books that I want to recommend are horror. The first is My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell, which is told in two timelines, 2007 and 2017, where Vanessa gets mm, groomed into a relationship with a teacher. She's a teenager in 2007, and in 2017, she has to make a decision whether she will join the allegations against said teacher um, brought forth by multiple underage girls. And what I found so terrifying about this book is A, that it read very true. And I do think the real life horrors scare me in books far more than sort of otherworldly, supernatural, monstery stuff. And I did also think it was really, really interesting having this aspect of not trusting your own memories. So that is something that I find quite scary as well. Um, the emotion you attach as you are making a memory, she believes to be in love with this older teacher, will then subsequently um, imprint <laughs> in your mind in that way and then having to question the value that you've based on your own memories as an adult, ooh, I thought that was really scary. Similarly, The Power of the Dog, published in 1967 and written by Thomas Savage, also scared me more because of the characters that read very true. We follow two brothers, one quite simple, hardworking, the other very intelligent and sadistic. They run a ranch, together and one day the first brother brings home a new wife and her son and the sadistic brother basically feels pushed out and plots to make her life a living nightmare. I thought there was a really oppressive atmosphere in this book. I also thought it was a really unpredictable plot and yeah it it scared me. It scared me because imagining this to be true was pretty horrible. There is more to sadness than tears, so I will refrain from recommending A Little Life, which I've now kind of done because I didn't cry more reading any other book than when reading A Little Life. But I am instead going to recommend The Mermaid of Black Conch by Monique Ruffet, which is set on an unnamed Caribbean island somewhere in the 1970s and we follow the love story between a mermaid and a fisherman and I don't really want to tell you that much more but it's really sad because of the doomed love story and because of the horrifying hate depicted on the page and these two get caught up within that hate and something as pure as the feeling of love gets destroyed basically because of hate. It isn't just a love story. We do get a lot of commentary on the time and the setting. Um, the author plays around linguistically a little bit with also letting the mermaid speak in a certain way. I don't want to spoil too much but I thought this was a really interesting novel. I also want to recommend the book Agatha, which was published in 2017 by Danish author Anne-Kathrin Bormann. I read the English translation. And in this, um, we follow an 
elderly psychiatrist, psychiatrist on the cusp of his retirement. Um, he works in Paris, I believe. I think it's Paris in the 40s randomly, but the setting isn't that important to the story. Anyhow, he's kind of tired of life and his job and his patients until months before being all set for retirement, he takes on a new patient who begs him, Agatha, this is, begs him to take him on as a patient. And we read this very short story about loneliness and aging and feeling as if you are drifting into obscurity and missing connection. And I just thought this was sad, but, but quietly sad. This wasn't like bawl your eyes out sad. I just felt moved and sorry for the characters in this book and um, there's a little sliver of hope wrapped up in the pages which to me does make sadness more digestible. Surprise I think is one of the most difficult emotions to pin down because it can be positive and it can be negative but I have two book suggestions here that got me surprised as I was reading it. The first is The Wonder, published in 2016, I believe, written by Emma Donoghue. And in this historical fiction, we follow a British nurse as she is sent to observe a family and especially a young girl who is claiming to survive without eating any food. This has sort of themes of religion and, and, and mystery and family. Now I'm just summarizing the plot. But what I found so surprising about this book that I really couldn't tell where this was supposed to go genre-wise. Was this um, a true account? Um, was this uh, a trick <laughs> was the family trying to gain something by claiming that this was true? Um, is there a sort of fantastical otherworldly explanation? Uh, I, yeah, I just, I really couldn't quite tell where the story would be going. I find historical fiction to be the most difficult to predict, ironically, I think, because I just read it so rarely. But this one I also just found really easy to read. I think Emma Donoghue is a really popular and sort of bestseller writing author for a reason. I thought this one was great. And then perfect for the emotion of surprise. I think a really solid thriller with a good plot twist should be on here. And I picked Claire McIntosh's I Let You Go, which follows a woman who tries to piece her life back together after a tragic car accident. And uh, yeah, I, I don't read that many thrillers, but thought this one was great. I also went on to read a few more books by the author and just thought they were really page turnery. Obviously, I don't want to spoil the reveals and twists and turns of this book for you, but it was one of the thrillers that surprised me most. I would be curious upon rereading it now, many years later, whether it would have the same effect but I am always thankful for book recommendations with good plot twists. It's always diff difficult, right? If you're suggesting them, if you're recommending them, then you're already spoiling that they contain a plot twist. That, that was difficult, but it surprised me and I thought it was a really fun thriller. And finally, as the seventh emotion and latest addition to the universal emotions described by Paul Aikman's research is content. And I'm going to suggest you read either Yellow Face, published last year by R.F. Kuang. You've probably read it. Everyone's read it. It's about a jealous wannabe author who steals the unpublished manuscript of a deceased friend of hers who has been a very successful author. And um, yeah, she then basically runs with this manuscript, um, claims that she wrote it. This is a book basically about racism, entitlement and the publishing industry. It's been everywhere. You've seen the cover. I thought it was really cool to have read this one. Now I know what everyone's talking about. And I felt so much contempt for this character, the protagonist who steals the manuscript. And this protagonist also feels so much contempt for 
other players in this story. I think this emotion is really wrapped up beautifully in the pages of this book. And I think it's a great suggestion for this emotion. And finally, one of my favourite Greek myth retellings is Circe by Madeline Miller. In this, we follow Circe, the witch, as she is banished to live on an uninhabited island by herself. And she is just so much cooler than all these other shitty men and gods around her. So I think she is entitled to feel some content. The scene where she turns men into pigs, I think, is epic. And I also think this book is better than The Song of Achilles. I keep on saying that. So maybe I also feel some contempt uh, for other books, all these Greek myth retellings that don't quite reach to the pinnacle that I think is Cersei. So 14 books that all made me feel something that are all worth a read. Which book made you cry, laugh, shout out in fear? Um, which gave you all the feels? I always thought I was someone who wanted a book to make me feel something, but I found it really difficult to find some books, especially for the emotion of sadness. I rarely, cry. Maybe I'm a robot. And I also found it difficult to decide on some book recommendations for the emotion of surprise because I don't want to spoil things for you. But go ahead, spoil your emotions to me. Give me some book recommendations that made you feel something. I beg of you and have a really good week. Bye. See you soon.